Here we go and welcome to the ADF technology. My name is Michael and today we are building our very own external SSD and either it could be $50 cheaper or 100% faster than everything else you can find on the market right now. So there's absolutely no reason why you should not build your own external SSD at this point and I think we should just start right after the intro. So what do I mean with this? If we could look at the prob probably the most um, popular external SSD you can find at the moment, it's the Samsung T5, and it's probably the most affordable and probably one of the best external SATA SSDs you can find at the moment. SATA SSD means we are just looking at USB 3.2 Gen 1, so around about five gigabits a second, and we can just think about 500, 50 to 580 megabytes a second read and writes when we talk about sequential reads and writes. So today I will just only talk about sequential reads and writes. So this is pretty popular, but this is just a SATA SSD. And if you look into modern computers, we can now afford pretty easy and pretty good um, NVMe SSDs like this one I fear in my hands. So today we're just trying to build an NVMe external SSD that is double the speed of this SATA um, SSD from Samsung and gets nearly at the same price point. So I think this is just really a no-brainer. No-brainer means we are just talking about this NVMe drive. We can just put in an enclosure like this one I have here. It's from Icybox. Um, I can really um, just recommend this one. I will put a couple of um, really good NVMe SSDs you can just buy and that would be a perfect fit for this build. And I will also put a couple of enclosures um, you can also find on Amazon down in the video description. So just click down there and you just can everything uh, have on your hands just like you want it. So what do you need in the first place? You need your NVMe SSD like I fear I've uh, just a 512 gigabyte um, SSD from Toshiba because you can just talk about this in two ways. On the one hand you can just buy a completely new NVMe drive um, like this one here and um, from Amazon I would recommend buying a Western Digital Blue or just go for a, a Sabre and Rocket or something like this but I will put a link down in the video description. This is just one of the best and most affordable um, NVMe drives. At this point, you just don't need to go and into um, Samsung Pro drives or even the Evo Plus is too expensive for this build, but I come to this point later. Uh, so just you need your NVMe, NVMe drive um, or you can just go for the other way, not buying a new one, but um, get yourself one for maybe your uh, laptop and you're just upgrading your laptop and can use the already installed NVMe drive from your laptop and just crank it into an external enclosure and just use it as an external SSD. Like I did here, I, this one is from my Dell XPS. I upgraded my Dell XPS with a bigger and better um, SSD and just got this here over to make just an external SSD out of, it, out of it. Second point, you will absolutely need your enclosure like this from Icybox here. This also comes with a little bit of accessories. So you have this um, PCB you can just get with it. Um, there you have your controller on it and your USB Type-C port and just the mounting mechanism and all the ports you need to get your NVMe drive in here. Um, just keep an eye on it. Um, I will also put a link down in the video description, but just think about it. This now runs not USB 3.2 Gen 1 like on the T5, but this runs USB 3.2 Gen 2. That means we can just get 10 gigabits a second. This translates into something like 1250 megabytes a second, um, but the controllers at these moments, like the upgraded Samsung T7 for example, are just capable of delivering 1000 megabytes a second. So there's a little bottleneck on the controller, so um, we can nearly fully utilize the USB Type-C port we have here with USB 3.2 Gen 2. So just keep in mind, we are not expecting to get close to 1250, so we are basically stuck at 1000. But this is just still double the performance of an older uh, SATA SSD like I have here. What you also get with your external SSD is pretty easy. The enclosure, the PCB, and you get some uh, more uh, spare parts like here. What you absolutely need is something like this. This is um, your heat spreader you, we need to install um, in a few minutes and also your uh, thermal um, compound here. It's a thermal pad you just stick between your NVMe drive 
and your um, heat spreader so you can just um, have the best transfer from the heat outside of the chassis. So I absolutely love this icy box um, variant because you have a lot of um, uh, fins here on both sides and it's just a little um, heavy um, aluminum block and it's really sturdy and it's not get scratches really fast. So I like this solution here because yes, NVMe drives can get extremely hot. They pull a couple of watts power and you can just imagine um, there's this all needs to be dissipated uh, passively through the complete case of your NVMe drive. So just keep in mind, buy one that it's just more suitable for your needs. More accessories, you also get cables like this USB type A to USB type C cable as well as USB type C to type C. So you can utilize the full speed here at this point and more thermal pads and um, some screws you will also need to screw the NVMe drive onto the PCB. What we will come to this later here. At this point, maybe some of you might ask me why you just go for an enclosure that is just capable of USB 3.2 Gen 2 and not for a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure that is also available. Yes, but this costs nearly five times the cost of this USB version. So this just needs to convert the PCIe lanes from your NVMe drive through the controller to USB and USB is just way more common. So if you have a, a PC and this is just also something you should just think about, your PC can just utilize USB 3.2 Gen 2 and not have a Thunderbolt uh, 3 port like I have here with my Surface Pro 7. And by the way, if you just want to check out my review I, uh, re I did a couple of weeks ago, you can just check it out here in the info card in this video. So maybe you just want to see me uh, review this Surface Pro 7 at this point. You don't really need a Thunderbolt 3 um, SSD at this point. On the one hand, you can argue, yes, um, NVMe drives can get really fast, but I doubt that you really utilize the full speed of Thunderbolt 3 and NVMe drives at this point. So 1000 megabytes a second sequential reads and writes is just way better than 500 on the SATA. And I think the uplift is not worth it to spend so much mod money on an enclosure like um, you can just get on Amazon for $170, I think. Um, just 40 bucks for this one is just totally fine. Okay, so now we have everything in place and we can just build our own external SSD. You will just probably need uh, some screwdrivers at this point, so I got mine here. And just go for it and open the enclosure and just put everything together, but just be careful and so you just don't ruin your NVMe drive at this point. Okay, so now we're just putting the NVMe drive into the PCB like this one here. And just keep in mind, you also, um, just look at from the side, you also have enough place um, when you get a bigger um, NVMe drive um, with more storage, um, you can sometimes have chips on the other side or on both sides. So it should be just suitable for this one here that you have enough space between the PCB and the NVMe drive. So we not need just now our screws here to mount it together. Okay, put the screws in here. Oh, these are so tiny. Yes, and now we have everything in place. So um, this should just go nowhere. And just be careful, um, re you really need to put on this uh, thermal pad. It's just super important. Um, as well as the heat spreader. So this will just make contact um, with the inside of your case because you just want to spread the heat as much as you can and the fins just doing their work. So just be careful and um, use this and just not try to run this NVMe drive without anything. Okay, now we are applying the heat spreader. So we have just this little piece here that fits perfectly. Okay, so now we have everything in place. Um, we have um, the thermal pad on the NVMe drive. We have this uh, heat spreader assembled. So now we just need to stick it all together in here, um, just carefully. And the heat spreader just needs to make contact with the inside of the case. So we just don't, yeah, that sounds great. It's a tight fit. Yes. Okay, like this one. Okay, so this fitting is really good. So we now have everything in place and now we can just screw it all together. And now we're done and then we can just test it and see if the results are just good. And this feels just really sturdy, really good. Um, probably this is now my favorite um, uh, external SSD at this point. And okay. um, 
now we are ready. If you take a look at the Western Digital Blue, I can highly recommend to do this whole procedure with. We're looking around $130 um, for this NVMe drive and we're looking for another $40 for this enclosure so, so we just sticking around about 170 dollars so um it's right at the price point of this t5 and um, one terabyte drive but we're looking at double the speed or if you put in another perspective um, you can buy a samsung t7 with the same speed as this one but it's 50 dollars more so um i think this one is just uh, when it comes to price performance a really good choice and you can easily do it by your own so um this is not a big deal so just keep in mind i have just a toshiba uh, 512 um, gigabytes here so um bigger ssd the probably better and more performance you can get out of it and this is just the stock um, nvme drive for my dell xps this is not the fastest one that that's why i was upgrading it to a samsung 970 evo plus um, a really really good choice if you want to have it as your main um, internal ssd so i think um, we just need to see how fast this toshiba um, drive can perform now we just can open a uh, crystal disk mark like always and just see how fast this performs i will just do a quick run of sequential reads sequential writes i know um, it heavily depends when you look at 4k or just the total iops possibilities here um, it heavily depends on the ssd and not on the um, usb 3.2 gen 2 or um, connection or just on the controller so this is just more a thing on the controller on the nvme drive so um the, your results might vary, but uh, we can just give it a little try here and see how fast this performs. Just keep in mind, if you only have USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabit a second, um, this is not worth it. Just stick with your SATA SSDs, totally fine. But if you want to have more performance, just go for um, an external NVMe drive. So uh, they are really affordable at this point and you can just easily build it on your own. Okay, these results are looking pretty good. Um, even with the write speeds, we're looking at 1022 megabytes a second. Just keep in mind the controller just has a maximum um, capability of 1000 megabytes and the whole USB connection only just only just handles 1250. So we totally in the range we just wanted to. You don't need to buy the high end top spec NVMe drive for this because um, the controller or the connection could be the bottleneck at this point. Just go for a really cheap one. And I think, and this is just a proof, you can really easily build your own USB um, powered NVMe drive on your own. And if you dislike this video, you know what to do. But if you liked it, hit like down there, get subscribed and enable the notifications with a bell icon so you won't miss any future video of the idea of technology. And I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.